I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for acknowledging my advocacy with this award, but I have to acknowledge that you're honoring me for doing what each of you does every single day. So thank you very much, and I'd like to honor you in return. And I know that you do that work every single day because I've had the opportunity recently to become more intimately involved with the Los Angeles section of NCJW. Where are you, LA? There's, there we are. We are partnering, partnering together, working on a variety of, of initiatives, including sponsoring a women's advocacy training project to churn out more and more rambunctious women to do this kind of advocacy work. And finally, I am really honored to be mentioned in the same breath with my co-honorees this evening, with Kiera and with Jessica. They are doing amazing reproductive justice advocacy, and you're all going to forget I was even up here when you hear from them. <laughs> so I'd like to, to speak just for a few minutes, because I know you're panicking at this point. There are three honorees. We're going to be here all night. <laughs> but just for a few moments about the exciting moment that we're in right now. We're in a moment when the reproductive rights and reproductive health movement as a whole is really taking a step back and thinking not only about our language and talking about reproductive justice, but thinking deeply about what that means, what the reproductive justice framework means to all of us and what it says about our mission and our practice in organizing. And by convening this conversation tonight and having this fantastically diverse set of young reproductive justice advocates at the event speaking, NCJW is really right there leading that conversation. So thank you for bringing us all together. Now, I know many of you are familiar with reproductive justice, and you've been doing this work from the very beginning. But just to get us all on the same page, because I know we did I hear 50% are new to the Washington Institute? That's great. Just to get us all on the same page, I want to lay out the reproductive justice definition that I personally find to be the most illuminating one. And there are lots of different ways of defining reproductive justice, but this comes from Law Students for Reproductive Justice, which is the organization that got me into way more trouble than I expected last year. <laughs> so the definition that we use is that reproductive justice will exist when all people can exercise the rights and access the resources they need to thrive and to decide whether, when, and how to have and to parent children with dignity, free from discrimination, coercion, or violence. It's a lot. Right? It's an amazing mission for us to, to use as a driving force in our framework. And it says a lot about the work that we've been doing for a long time, but it helps us to really focus on the intersectionality of that work and how reproductive justice is different for communities of color, for young women, for older women, for men, for LGBT folks. It connects us across movements and gives us a frame that is not only more accurate for seeing reproductive health and rights in each of our lives, because each of our lives are intersection, right? We each have these multiple identities. But it gives us the more accurate view and a connecting view, one that connects us to other social justice movements. I see this in my own work, where I do social justice advocacy on behalf of domestic workers who are exposed to harmful household chemicals that have implications for their reproductive health or when I'm standing with my LGBTQ brothers and sisters and we're talking about the right to same-sex parents being able to adopt. That's a choice of being able to raise your children how and when and, and um, when you choose to. And the domestic violence work that we talked about a little bit in my introduction, to be able to choose to parent free from violence is about reproductive justice. So this is a framework that connects many social justice communities and that's amazing, that's powerful, and that's ultimately how we make progress on our progressive agenda. Am I right? Okay. 
So I know that Kiera and Jessica are going to touch on how the reproductive justice framework really specifically connects to young women, because I'm going I'm to make a guess here that maybe there's some panic in the room. Where are the young women? Are they showing up for this fight? We're concerned about the young women? Okay. She's going to touch on the panic and make us all feel a lot better. And I believe Jessica is going to talk about how this really resonates for communities of color, which is an important aspect of the reproductive justice framework. But I'm going to talk about a surprising community, and one that I think we don't remember we need to connect to, and that's conservatives. Now, I know you might be a little bit surprised that I'm the ambassador to the conservative movement, <laughs> but I actually grew up in a very conservative community. I have a pretty conservative family. We don't actually agree about abortion rights, for example. And so for me, one of the things that the reproductive justice movement offers is a way to connect with them and with other conservative-minded folks who don't necessarily agree about abortion rights. Now, that's because the reproductive justice framework includes fighting for access to contraception, fighting for affordable access to breast cancer screenings, to being able to adopt. It's not just about abortion. And that doesn't mean that we ever ever stop defending Roe v. Wade or stop fighting to make sure that abortion is free, not free. Oh. <laughs> Accessible and affordable and safe and legal. We always have to defend Roe. But there are a lot of other battles that we're fighting right now. If 2012 taught us anything, it's that this fight is many faceted, including on things as basic as birth control and preventative health. But those are fights where we can reach across and work with communities that we don't always find agreement. And that allows us to get more done, to make progress on these issues, which is important to be able to make progress for the women who are counting on us. And it allows us to be a movement that attracts new voices and new energy that's not already in the room with us. And that's important as well. So. I know you're still panicked about the fact that there are three speakers. So I'm going to conclude and allow the other speakers to touch on the other communities that are brought into this fight and brought into the, the social justice framework using a reproductive justice lens. Thank you all so much, and happy St. Patrick's Day and happy Pesach.